Rolex's reputation has been meticulously built on decades of craftsmanship, innovation and exclusivity. However, behind the gleam of polished timepieces and storied heritage lies a darker narrative that raises questions about integrity and ethics. The whispers of corruption within Rolex have cast shadows over its esteemed facade, forcing us to confront uncomfortable truths. You bet we have shocking revelations to share with you today. We are talking about everything from the black market to the grey market to the corruption amongst ADs and Rolex's seeming lack of strategy. One of the most disturbing revelations is counterfeit watches infiltrating Rolex's authorised dealerships. Shockingly, reports have surfaced suggesting that faux Rolex timepieces have compromised even the brand's retail spaces. That raises concerns about Rolex's quality control and security measures and underscores the audacity of those willing to exploit the brand's prestige for illicit gain. Second-hand retailer Watchfinder & Co. have discovered a rising quantity of counterfeit timepieces on the market, with counterfeit Rolex watches accounting for about half of the total. After going through the authentication process, up to 10% of the timepieces purchased from sellers in the preceding year were found to be counterfeits, as stated by the Chief Executive Officer of Watchfinder, Arjen van der Velle. As a result of its widespread appeal and high consumer demand, Rolex is said to be the luxury watch brand most susceptible to imitation. In addition, as the quality of the fakes increases, it becomes increasingly difficult to spot them. A previous estimate of 80% of fake watches may now be discovered by Watchfinder simply by glancing at them, which is significantly lower than the previous estimate of 20%. The company's employees, controlled by the Swiss luxury conglomerate Richmond, must undertake more rigorous examinations, such as opening watch case backs and inspecting movements to detect high-end counterfeits. Folks, the secondary watch market is projected to be worth $27.3 billion per year, and the prevalence of counterfeit or replica luxury watches is only expected to increase. Last month, Omega, a part of Swatch Group AG, announced that three former employees had been involved in a criminal plot to sell a Frankenstein Omega Speedmaster built from primarily legal pieces stolen from other historical watches. By selling for over $3 million in 2021, the watch set a new record for the highest price paid at auction for an Omega timepiece. This record had previously stood since 1921. It was purchased by the corporation, which asserts that it had been the target of a criminal scheme. As you can imagine, the enticement of earnings has driven some dealers down a dangerous path, even though Rolex has diligently established an elite network of authorised dealers to protect its status as an exclusive brand. According to some reports, authorised Rolex dealers may have been complicit in smuggling genuine Rolex watches into the grey market to circumvent the tight guidelines outlined by the brand. That tarnishes these dealers' reputations and challenges the foundations of Rolex's dedication to managing its distribution channels. In other words, the reputation of these dealers will be tarnished. There have been allegations made within Rolex of favoritism and nepotism, both of which have caused eyebrows to be raised. Some individuals, typically with close relationships to key figures within the brand, have allegedly advanced the ranks without adhering to the meritocratic standards that Rolex is known for. This is one of the criticisms that have been leveled against Rolex, that erodes the trust of the brand's loyal customers and undermines the hard work and dedication of numerous individuals who struggle to honor Rolex's legacy. Rolex has responded to these charges by denying them while also taking countermeasures. Their answer is a mix of denial and counteraction. The company insists that it has not wavered in its dedication to quality and ethics, and it categorically rejects any suggestion that it has been involved in unethical business methods. The company is serious about preserving its good name, as evidenced by the fact that legal action has been taken against people accused of damaging its reputation. As watch enthusiasts and customers, we must hold Rolex accountable for living up to the high standards it has set for itself throughout its history. The trust and admiration of the company's customers are the foundation upon which the brand's reputation is created, and any violations of that trust require an open and honest response from the company. Rolex can reassert its dedication to quality and rebuild its integrity within the watchmaking world if it acknowledges the the rumours of corruption and corruption.
confronts them head on. That will be accomplished by addressing them directly. Now, let's delve into the shopper's view, the buyer's perspective. In a specific way, yes, the buyer does benefit from purchasing his goods. Of course, there are advantages and disadvantages, perks and pitfalls. Let's talk about the advantages first. The grey market offers the opportunity to acquire products at a lower cost than standard market prices, while expanding the range of available products within a particular country. However, the drawbacks of the grey market outweigh its benefits. One primary concern is the need for manufacturer-backed warranties or assurances for products sold through this channel. Additionally, due to the uncertainty surrounding the condition of grey market goods, their reliability could be better, as they could be either new new or used. Moreover, the need for after-sale support adds to the disadvantages of purchasing from the grey market. Customers also need help discerning between original products and copies in this market. The grey market often hosts products not tailored to a specific demographic. Viewing this from the perspective of businesses, industries and governments, these issues must be carefully considered when evaluating the impact of the grey market. Of course, the grey market has more drawbacks than benefits for everyone, but let's look at the little advantages it provides businesses. First, the grey market is an excellent way for enterprises that sell luxury items at inflated prices to expand their customer base. Then, employees of these businesses sell things on the grey market to satisfy sales quotas because of the lower prices. However, given that we know the benefits, we must ensure everyone knows the drawbacks of the grey market. Foremost, the grey market exerts a detrimental impact on businesses and industrial profitability. This arises from the potential availability of non-original products through grey market channels, which poses a significant risk to the company's brand image and overall reputation. Additionally, the government experiences a loss of tax revenue due to the sale of goods without proper taxation enforcement. This phenomenon creates a dual pricing structure for goods within the market, resulting from parallel marketing and imports. Purchases made through the grey market are excluded from the company's official warranty coverage, compounding consumer risk. Moreover, the distribution of products through grey market channels can disrupt business relationships and erode consumer trust, undermining long-term success. The expansion of grey market trade further reverberates through the economy and industry volume, directly impacting the market dynamics. That in turn diminishes consumer confidence when they perceive discrepancies between their expectations and the value received from a business. It is important to note that official distribution networks established by the manufacturer are the only legitimate means to acquire products. In conclusion, the adverse effects of the grey market encompasses financial repercussions, brand integrity concerns, tax revenue loss, market instability and weakened consumer trust, all of which have broader implications for both individual businesses and the industry. So folks, we've established that the grey market causes significant losses for companies, industries and countries. Folks, damaging any company's good name and brand reputation is much more expensive than direct financial losses. Market challenges can be tackled, akin to addressing issues worldwide, by developing strategies to stabilize and resolve them. Let's delve into how this approach functions. Establishing a consistent pricing framework for all products the company offers becomes imperative. In industries facing challenges like grey market activities, businesses should expand their distribution networks to counteract such practices. This expansion should be accompanied by strict adherence to robust terms and conditions by distributors. Efficient monitoring of stock distribution across various routes is crucial. Achieving price stability involves managing production costs effectively, allowing cost-competitive pricing to outperform rivals. The corporation and its distributors must exert a strong influence to maintain control over the product supply market. It is vital to set achievable organizational objectives to prevent employees, especially sales staff, from engaging in black market activities. Implementing these measures allows the market to be more effectively regulated and stabilized, fostering a healthier business environment. In the world of luxury watches, where reputation and reality intersect, the emergence of corruption allegations within Rolex is a stark reminder that even the most venerable institutions are not immune to ethical challenges. As we navigate the delicate balance between admiration and skepticism, the question remains. 
Will Rolex rise above the shadows, reaffirming its status as a paragon of horological excellence? Or will the whispers of corruption cast a lasting stain on its legacy?